again and welcome back to my blog. Uh, I keep hearing this commercial um, for Nationwide Children's Hospital that they think that the cause of obesity in teens is that their stomachs are too big so they want to make them smaller. It's not what causes obesity. So I'm going to read a little excerpt here from Hell's Kitchen. The cause, prevention, and cure of obesity, diabetes, and metabolic syndrome. By the creators of Dead Doctors Don't Lie, J.D. Wallach, B.S., D.V.M., M.D., Ma Lan, M.D., M.S., L.A.C. And um, this is about our soil and nutrients. <clears throat> In 1936, the U.S. Senate entered into the record as U.S. Senate document number 264, a reprint of an article from Cosmopolitan magazine, which stated... Our physical well-being is more directly dependent upon the minerals we take into our systems than upon calories or vitamins, or upon the precise proportions of starch, protein, or carbohydrates we consume. The document's authors went on to state, Do you know that most of us today are suffering from certain dangerous diet deficiencies which cannot be remedied until depleted soils from which our food comes are brought into proper mineral balance? The alarming fact is that foods, fruits, vegetables, and grains now being raised on millions of acres of land that no longer contains enough of certain minerals are starving us no matter how much of them we eat. And that's the clue right there. This talk about minerals is novel and quite startling. In fact, a realization of the importance of minerals in food is so new that the textbooks on nutritional dietetics contain very little about it. Nevertheless, it is something that concerns all of us, and the further we delve into it, the more startling it becomes. You'd think, wouldn't you, that a carrot is a carrot, that one is about as good as another as far as nourishment is concerned. But it isn't. One carrot may look and taste like another and yet be lacking in the particular mineral element which our system requires and which carrots are supposed to contain. Laboratory tests prove that the fruits, the vegetables, the grains, the eggs, and even the milk and the meats of today are not what they were a few generations ago, which doubtless explains why our forefathers thrived on a selection of foods that would starve us. No man today can eat enough fruits and vegetables to supply his stomach with the mineral salts he requires for perfect health because his stomach isn't big enough to hold them, and we are starting to turn into big stomachs. No longer does a balanced and fully nourishing diet consist merely of so many calories or certain vitamins or fixed proportions of starches, proteins, and carbohydrates. We know that our diets must contain, in addition, something like a score of mineral salts. 60, actually. It is bad news to learn from our leading authorities that 99% of the American people are deficient in these minerals and that a marked deficiency in any one of the more important minerals actually results in disease. Any upset of the balance, any considerable lack of one or another element, however microscopic the body requirement may be, and we sicken, suffer, and shorten our lives. We know that vitamins are complex chemical substances which are indispensable to nutrition, and that each of them is of importance for normal function of some special structure in the body. Disorder and disease result from any vitamin deficiency. It is not commonly realized, however, that vitamins control the body's appropriation of minerals, and in the absence of minerals, they have no function to perform. Lacking vitamins, the system can make some use of minerals, but lacking minerals, vitamins are useless. So, that's all I'm going to read from that right now, but there's a key there. And that, when was that written? 1936. Do you think our soil has gotten better or worse? And do you think we can get the minerals from our food or not? The key to obesity is not overconsumption. It's undernutrition because of a lack of nutrients in the food that you eat. You must supplement. That's all I have for that. All right. Dr. Wallach in this article can say it better than I can, but I wanted to run that by you. 